Welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service. This broadcast is brought to you on this station every Sunday at this time. Thank you for listening. Good morning and welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service. The music for today will be provided by the Lutheran Radio Choir, directed by Trudy Schmaltz. Our guest speaker for today is the Reverend Paul Eggold, a retired hospital chaplain. Your liturgist is Pastor Schmidt of St. John's Lutheran in Glendale, Wisconsin, and our hymn numbers from the Lutheran hymnal are 40, 454. Jesus says, You are like salt for everyone on earth, but if salt no longer tastes like salt, how can it be made salty again? All it is good for is to be thrown out and walked on. What is this idea of being salt for Jesus? Stay tuned as the Reverend Paul Eggold focuses on the theme, Being Salt for Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, be present now. Our hearts in true devotion bow. Thy Spirit send with grace divine. And let thy truth within us shine. Unseal our lips to sing thy Our service now begins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have called your church to witness that in Christ you have reconciled us to yourself. Grant that by your Holy Spirit we may proclaim the good news of your salvation so that all who hear it may receive that gift of salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lutheran Radio Choir will sing hymn 40, The God of Abraham Praise. The God of Abraham praise, all praise him be his name, who was and is and is to be and still the same, the one eternal God, heir of that now appears, the first and last be Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We haven't loved you with our whole heart, and we haven't loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. Glory be to God on high. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. The Old Testament lesson appointed for the 16th Sunday after Pentecost is from the 30th chapter of Deuteronomy. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. 
If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his just decrees, then you shall live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. But if your heart turns away and you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him. For he is your life and length of days that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel is from the 14th chapter of St. Luke. Now, great crowds accompanied Jesus and he turned to them saying, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, All who see it begin to mock him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to encounter another king in war, will not sit down first and deliberate whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? And if not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace." So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is of no use either for the soil or for the manure pile. It is thrown away. He who has ears, let him hear. Here ends the reading. Let us confess our holy Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. After the choir sings hymn 400, Take My Life and Let It Be, the Reverend Paul Egold will speak on the theme, Being Salt for Jesus. Jesus, 
A few moments ago, you heard the words of Jesus according to the account in St. Luke. This morning, I would like to speak to you based on these same words according to the account of St. Matthew. Matthew 5, verse 13, which reads as follows. Jesus says, you are like salt for everyone on earth. But if salt no longer tastes like salt, how can it make food salty? All it is good for is to be thrown out and walked on. Jesus here is talking about what salt was and still is used for. Salt adds seasoning to food to make it more pleasing to the tongue and more edible. Also back in Jesus' day, salt was also used to preserve meat from spoiling. What was Jesus trying to say by using salt as a metaphor? He was saying to the folks who heard him that day as well as to us, his 20th century disciples, Jesus is saying in effect, you say that you are my followers. You say that you are my children. You say correctly that you belong to me because of your baptism. Now, I'm looking to see if you will act and talk like my followers. Talking to you was like talking to an apple tree, for example, saying, you claim to be an apple tree that is alive. Where are your fruits? Are there any? Are the apples that you produce in line with the type of apple tree that you say that you are? Jesus says, look folks, you are my disciples, my followers, people who believe in me, now is the important time that you act like the disciples that you say you are. I want you to make a difference in the world. I want you to do what you can with my power and blessing to preserve the world that's going to hell in a handbasket. There's so much evil in the world, so much hatred between people, so much fighting and warfare, Like salt, I want you to make a difference in the world in which you live. Like salt, I want you to do your part to preserve this world from the power of Satan and the forces of evil. You can't do this on your own. That's why you have my blessing going with you. I will give you the words to say. I will give you the Holy Spirit to empower you and to encourage you along the way, as well as make your words and actions powerful and effective. Unfortunately, because we are sinful human beings, we don't always respond positively to Jesus' call to us to be salt in the world. Too often we reply to Jesus' call negatively by saying in our hearts things like, I'm your follower, Lord, but really, Don't expect me to follow close behind you. I want to live my own life the way I want to. Besides, it's too hard to do what you're asking me to do. How do you expect me to be merciful and forgiving toward people who don't even like me? How do you expect me to turn the other cheek when people hurt me? It's a tough world we live in. I have to defend myself. I have to give as well as take if I want any respect from people around me. However, Jesus is saying to us today, it is not enough just to know me and then do nothing about it or nothing with it. You have my marching orders to live out your faith by the way that you walk and talk and live and associate with people. Someone once said, if you were hauled into court and accused of being a disciple of Jesus, would there be sufficient evidence to convict you based on what you say and how you live? Or sometimes we doubt that we have the resources to obey Jesus' marching order. We doubt 
that Jesus will bless our efforts to be salt in this world today. In this regard, I point to myself. <clears throat> when I first started out in the, after, in the ministry after graduating from the seminary, I had an awful time preparing and preaching sermons. I doubted that Jesus would be with me. Like doubting Thomas, I doubted that I had the ability to write and preach meaningful sermons. It took me forever to write a sermon each week. I labored and labored and struggled trying to say just the right words. It didn't help that one of my older brothers taught seminarians how to preach. He himself was an exceptional preacher. I tried for years to measure up to my brother. I was plagued by doubts. Until one day, <clears throat> by the grace of God and the encouragement of folks that whom I trusted, I decided to let my brother be my brother and I will be myself and God will bless my efforts to be an able sermon writer and preacher. Jesus helped me stop my doubting. He forgave me and empowered me as a preacher. Question, why does Jesus want us to go out and be the salt of the earth? Why does he want us to make a difference in the world? The answer is there is so much moral decay everywhere. There is strife, there are wars, arguments between people. People are living out their lives without any concern for Jesus and what he has to say to us. That is where we come in. Jesus has given us his marching orders. He is asking us to go and do what we can, whatever that may mean. There is one thing we can do that is very effective. We can all pray. We can pray for people of God who are sharing the love of God in Jesus Christ. There are wonderful communicators like, for example, the Reverend Mark Jeske in his weekly television broadcast called Time of Grace, seen here in Milwaukee and all over the US. We can pray for God to bless this broadcast each week. We are not asking you who are hearing my voice to be preachers. We're not asking you to be the person who manages the controls or the person who directs the group of singers. But we are asking you to pray for us that these broadcasts each week can be salt that preserves and influences the lives of folks who tune in each week and who may not know Jesus Christ as savior of the world. Whenever you go to a restaurant, for example, for a meal, have you ever stopped before you eat, began eating and add, said a prayer out loud, asking God to bless the food and the cooks and the servers? My wife and I belong to a home Bible study group. We usually go out to eat dinner before we go to one or the other's home to have our Bible study. Before we eat at the restaurant, we join hands, bow our heads and pray the common table prayer out loud. We don't raise our voices above our normal speaking voices, but we don't pray silent either. Who knows how many people have been watching us? Who knows if we have influenced others to pray and strengthen their relationship to the Lord Jesus or even come to know the Lord Jesus and become his disciple. What else can we do today to be spiritual salt that preserves? That's my challenge to you. I don't know what your talents are, but you do. You see, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. God loves his world the world in which we live. Now he asks us to be like salt and to be agents to preserve the people of his world. He promises to forgive us when we fail as his agents. 
but he promises to empower us and to give us the words to say and the courage to say them to people who don't know who Jesus is and what it means to be a disciple and a follower of Jesus. Please join me in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord Jesus, we need your presence and the power of your Holy Spirit. We often fail at being salt. Forgive us, restore us constantly, empower us to be sensitive to the needs of others, especially those who do not know you now. Give us the words to say and the willingness to say them. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord for all the baptized family of God that each by the Holy Spirit's power would choose life in accordance with the Lord's revealed will. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For the strength of the Spirit upon all who are suffering or in any kind of need, and especially those who we have in our hearts, that they may be given courage and the will to take up their crosses and follow the Savior through suffering into the joys of life everlasting. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who rejoice this day in the rich mercies of God, that we may join them in their thanksgiving and praise, and that in our praise of you we become salt and light to a world to preserve, enlighten, and help others to enjoy the wonderful gifts that you have given us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who do not yet know the love of Christ, that the Holy Spirit might send us forth mightily to announce the joyful news that what we could never accomplish on our own, our Savior has accomplished for us and for all, and freely delights to bestow his kingdom upon every penitent and burdened heart, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For all who work to pass on the faith that through their teaching, God's salt, his mighty word would be at work in the young and in all inquirers, and that they would find eternal joy through faith in the promises of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the ministry outreaches of the church, especially the Lutheran radio show, that through these efforts your word may not be bound, but have free course and be preached to the joy and edification of all people everywhere, that salt and light would go forth from this place into the world, and that souls would find their way into the kingdom of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. As we celebrate 88 years of broadcasting the gospel of Jesus Christ, we'd love to send you a special free gift from our ministry to your home. As always, you can receive a copy of today's sermon. 
All you need to do is simply write the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. You may also phone our radio church office at 414-462-9900. You've been listening to the Lutheran Radio Church Service pre-recorded at Trinity Freistadt Lutheran Church in Mequon, Wisconsin. Today's music was provided by the Lutheran Radio Choir under the direction of Trudy Schmaltz. The message, Being Salt for Jesus, was given by the Reverend Paul Eggold, retired hospital chaplain of St. Michael's Hospital. Your liturgist has been Pastor Schmidt of St. John's Lutheran in Glendale, Wisconsin. Our Lutheran radio choir will now close the service with hymn 54, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. The preceding service was brought to you by the Lutheran Radio Church Service, broadcasting radio church services every Sunday morning since 1928. You may request a copy of this morning's sermon. Please pray for this important ministry. Prayerfully consider donating any amount the Lord enables you to give to this Christ-centered gospel ministry. Please mail your gift to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. That's the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. Thank you for your generous support of the Lutheran Radio Church Service, and may God bless your day.